Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. I have a box here full of some plants that I am very, very excited about and a little apprehensive to see what's inside of here. Everything here is from Equagenera. Looking forward to getting this shipment in. Equagenera, they are a fantastic company in Ecuador. They have a very big selection. I've ordered from them off and on for a long time because they were pretty good, still are, a pretty good place to get some orchids that can be harder to find up here in the States. Everything in here is, yeah, all aeroids. I had some orchids in the shopping cart. I took them out because, you know, money. Didn't want to go overboard with things because I kind of, I already sort of somewhat did go overboard. In one of my last videos, I showed this package coming in and talked about how we've had some pretty extreme cold weather and I was nervous about the shipping time. It was just bad timing. Nothing you can do about it. It's not normally this cold here or most places in the United States in mid-November. So I figured when I placed this order way back in October that it was safe, but things happen. Life's unpredictable. It was pretty cold. They felt chilly when I opened the box. I put my hands on them and they felt a little bit cool. Not frozen. There's the styrofoam lining in here. There's a piece of styrofoam on top. No heat pack that I'm aware of and that's okay. I'm not surprised by that because I don't recall seeing anything on the website about that even being an option. So there's the background. Boring stuff out of the way. I don't know about you all but I really just want to dive in here and have a look at these plants because I ordered some fun stuff. Plants that I have wanted for a pretty long time. I try my best to not make too many horrible noises with the plastic and paper through the microphone as I open these up. Though that is hard to avoid papers and plastic, they make crinkly sounds. Oh, look at that. Lots of growth in there. That's what I like to see. Are these taped down tight? That will come out gently. Oh, oh. Foliage is still feeling fairly firm. It's not soft and mushy with the exception of this new growth down here where it looks like there could be some cold damage on it. As long as the roots are okay, I have high hopes for the plants. You might want to know what this is, right? Philodendron Maximum Equagenera. This is one of their own plants. It had an interesting description on it. Similar to a Vichii, I think a little bit more broad and robust than the Vichii, maybe less with the ripples. It's one of those plants where I thought it sounded really cool from the description. It's not one I had seen other places because, you know, it's their plant. Undersides of those leaves has a nice color to it, but I don't know if that's something I should be excited about or if that's just because it got cold and the poor thing's dying. Hopefully it's not that. Hopefully it's just a neat looking underside. Neat looking underside. There's a interesting way to describe the bottom of a leaf. Okay. Pop this one open. Oh, that looks pretty good. Especially in comparison to seeing the brownish undertones on the other sides of the leaves on the last one. Yeah, that's a nice looking full plant. Wow, that is a sexy leaf. Get all those ripples, how the light bounces off of it. Love that texture. It's one of the reasons I've actually always wanted this one. This is an Anthurium vichii. It's still a baby, it'll get much, much, much bigger than this. As to, well, that, as long as I don't kill it. Here's the tag, in case I didn't put it up there on the screen, you wanna see how that was spelled. Vichii. I'm very pleased with how full the plant is. A lot of the Vichii's that I see for sale, they have two, maybe three leaves on them. Nice to see a lovely full plant. Not just because that's somewhat indicative of the plant's health, not somewhat, it's indicative of the plant's health at the time the grower had it. I mean, I consider it more of a fallback as in there's more room for air when there's more leaves that can go bad, there's still gonna be more leaves left to go ahead and photosynthesize and keep the plant going. Not anticipating anything bad happening, but like I said, it was really cold while these were shipped out. We've, I've almost had record colds here, temperatures in the lower 20s and in the teens. I don't know how long it was in transit in my area, so I can't say how much cold they were exposed to. I brought this inside within maybe a minute of it being left on the front porch. The door cam alerts me when packages are dropped off. So the very second I got the alert, I went out there and brought it in. So hopefully it wasn't too much cold. I can't say whether or not those trucks are climate controlled. So who knows how it's going to end up working. Pop this one open and then there's only one more after this one. There's some beautiful velvety soft leaves. See that? Does it look familiar? Look at that shimmer. It's one of the reasons I wanted this one and the next plants I'm gonna be opening up. They have almost an iridescence to the foliage and the veining and the shape and just everything about the plant I love, but it really, when you add that shine to it, that's a flashy plant. This is an Anthurium, Warkianum crossed with Anthurium 
Waterburyanum. I hear people pronounce Warwickianum differently and the Waterburyanum. So Warwickianums can be one of the more difficult ones as far as just really loving humidity. Really everything here that I got, there are plants that are all probably kind of going to be jerks. Big babies when it comes to humidity and temperature fluctuations. Probably should have opened up this one before I opened up the last one, but it doesn't matter. Oh, look at that. Nice and thick. That's what I like to see. Lots of leaves, lots of stems. Oh yeah, that's a nice big plant. Can you tell what it is? Even though the leaves are all facing away, it's hiding. Go ahead and flip this around so y'all can have a better look at it. My God, this is so much bigger than I expected. Look at this thing. It's freaking huge. This is the full blown Queen Anthurium. So part of the plant that made up the last plant. And you can see those nice big long leaves. This thing is a monster. I know I'm not supposed to be playing with the leaves all that much, but it's hard to not get in here and just, I just want to touch them and pet them. They really are velvety soft. This thing is a freaking stud. Look at all that flop. There's a nice big plant flop. Some great big giant floppy leaves. This is, this is going to be a problem. I need to lay off playing with the plant, especially because of everything they've probably been through with shipping. Okay, I'm going to get these plants into some water, let them have a soak, and talk about them just a little bit more. I don't have much more to say other than just holy freaking crap. Poked a whole bunch of holes in the plastic wrap and I'm going to get this filled up and get that sphagnum moss that's in there nice and moist. Get about two to three times that amount of water. I'm gonna let them soak for a while, probably, I don't know, maybe an hour, hour or two. Gotta make sure they're nice and hydrated before potting them up. I don't want to do too much to stress them out. I think they've been through enough and with the sphagnum being as dry as it is and them being in plastic bags, it's going to take them a minute to warm up. I think the water, you know, the water temperature is fine. It's warm in here so that water feels cold, but it's probably like say 68 to 70 degrees. I'd prefer it be a smidge warmer than that, but I think it should be fine. That is a beautiful sight. I have a big leaved arrowed orgy going on here in the soaking tub. The, which one was it? The Philodendron Maximum Equigenera. So this was the only one that I don't think I gave a fair description to. And that is partially because I ordered these a long time ago. With this one, I kind of forgot why I even ordered it. So I had to pull it up on my phone and do some reading. The uh, philodendron maximum is a cool looking plant. The leaves look very similar to an alocasia crossed with like uh, maybe a melanochrysum. It's going to be longer, but they have that like alocasia vibe to them. I tend to avoid that with a lot of aeroids because I would rather just get an alocasia. They tend to be cheaper and much easier to grow. But this one right here, the maxima, the equigenera one, that is the pictures that they have posted online it has much more of a limey green tone to the foliage. So this is maybe not what I want to be seeing here, but the inner growth still looks green. It's still firm. Cold damage can take a few days to show. That's going to be the case with everything in here. Just have to wait and see what happens with this one, really with all of them. The reason I liked the one from Equigenera, the Maxima Equigenera version, is that I believe it's supposed to have a longer, more robust looking leaf. So a stretched out, enhanced version of the regular Maxima. Everything in here, if you notice the theme, nice, long-leaved plants. That's what I was going for. These are plants I've wanted for quite a long time, was waiting for prices to get more stable, and I wanted to get them when I could try them out first and then grow space. The way I grow my plants, my growing style is different, kind of. I don't know, a lot of people do what I do, not necessarily like insulate their garage and throw heaters and ponds in there and everything. But a lot of us grow our plants inside, move them outside for the summer. Because of that, I tend to avoid plants that will throw an absolute sh fit when they get moved around. Because they're gonna be going outside during the summertime then being moved back inside and uh, it used to be that I couldn't heat this area until after the holidays because my uh, electrical panel couldn't handle the Christmas lights and the heaters. And that got resolved last year when I had a new breaker box put in and a new heater so things can be up and running and warm and humid in here as soon as I need to move the plants in. So that's really changing the game for me. And the heater didn't get installed until like January of last year. And I wasn't going to order these in January. I don't think that they would have had any shot at coming in alive. So here we are. 
been waiting to do this since last year and I am so happy and excited to see how everything in here grows. The VCI, I think, is pretty self-explanatory, really long, big ripply, gorgeous leaves, nice firm, stiff leaves. We already talked about the Equigenera Maxima. The only one that I don't think I really gave all that much attention, God, that is just beautiful. One I didn't give enough attention to, it's probably the Warokianum crossed with the Water Burning Annum. This one got kind of tongue-tied there. It looks similar to the regular queen over here, but more dull in color, not quite as much characteristic to the sinus, but still a nice long leaf, potentially a darker foliage. Time will tell if that one is a higher sheen to the leaves. That's what I liked, is that shininess, that sheen on the leaf. Can't wait to see those get bigger. So there it is. There's the unboxing of the fun Equigenera plants. A lot of wishlist plants here, really specifically two wishlist plants, and then a couple of others that I thought just looked cool and I wanted to grow them. Figured I might as well fill up a box and make it all worthwhile if I'm going to be doing this. Conditions out here, typically 77 to 82. Humidity fluctuates between 65 and 75. I can adjust that all over the place, but I don't really like to grow above 70 because other issues can start to arise. VPD is generally around 1.11. If you know what that is, good for you. Hello, like ultra plant nerd person. 1.1 is right around the sweet spot for where I keep my temperatures. That's just where you get the maximum amount of photosynthesis for everything. That being said, conditions in here should be good for everything. I do expect some setbacks. I had tried one of the Kings years ago and it did not respond well to shipping at all which could have had to do with how it was shipped, the time of year, could have been lots of things that go into it. In general, I will not be shocked at all if there's potentially up to, if not exceeding a 50% defoliation on a lot of these because of that cold that they experience. And then they just went from Ecuador to Florida where they get held in Florida for a few days and then they get shipped back out. So they've been through an awful lot. They're getting their soak, going to try and take it easy and not over love on the leaves. You know, I really just, I can't help but play with these big floppy leaves. I love these giant floppy leaves. But no, the plant's not going to appreciate that, especially when they need some hydration. Plants that are thirsty are much more brittle than plants that are fully hydrated. I'll get these pot up into some nice heavy pots, breathable pots with a good aeroid mix later on tonight after they've had a good amount of time to soak get them moved out of the way the heater too. That won't be good. That'll dry them out very quickly. This is this is making me happy. The Vici has been one of my favorites for a long time, so I'm happy to have it. Cannot wait to get some bigger leaves out of that one. Love the queen as well. And uh, even the cross, that, that velvetiness, that shininess, really cool. The Equigenera one, the Philodendron, that one's, it's just, it's gonna need some time. I wanted to mix up the Anthuriums and Philodendrons. The shopping cart originally had like $5,000 worth of plants in it, as we plant people do. And I spent several days narrowing it down and this is what I came up with that I decided I wanted and what was still available after having waited several days to pick out my plants. You'll be seeing them around in the videos in the background. I'm probably not going to be talking about them again until it's update time. I wanna get them potted up give them some time to adjust, get some new growth out of them, which is going to be something that will take a lot of patience with some of these plants here. When there's reports to be given, I will give them. I'll record those things and get them all put together into a video that will come out, I don't know, probably in a month or two, probably like two or three months. Need to give plants time to adjust and actually do their thing before there's follow-ups. Yeah, that's all. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below, do you have a favorite of these nice big-leaved philodendrons and anthuriums. Obviously there's a spiritus, that's a cool one. Oh, and a chrysum, all of these in here. A lot of aeroids with really big long leaves to choose from. Can't guarantee stock or prices on any of these, but I will try and find the links to them down below, assuming that they still have the links available for the plants. If not, I'll just link Equigenera's website down there. They also have Equigenera Florida, where you can order direct from the Florida place usually, and you don't have the delay in wait time that you have when you order from the main place in Ecuador. They also have a YouTube channel I'd recommend checking out. They don't upload to it very often, but it's pretty informative and it gives you a chance to actually see the plants in their growing environment, as well as on Instagram. So check them out there. This was not, I paid for these and I'm talking about it as if I've been paid to do this. I haven't. My own money, honest reviews, nice looking plants. Some of the best looking imports I've gotten in a very, very, very long time. Like a, a really, really long time. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye, bye.